Oh, how times have changed. Four years ago, the original Captain Marvel catapulted its protagonist into an MCU at the very peak of its popularity and influence, where every single movie they churned out was a guaranteed smash hit. Captain Marvel herself was widely tipped to become the next Tony Stark, the new face of the brand, the character that was going to lead Marvel into the next decade and possibly beyond. <laughs> But it turns out a lot can happen in four years. The MCU is now a faltering and tarnished brand with a string of failed movies and TV shows in its wake, increasingly alienated from its own fan base and openly mocked and ridiculed by a mainstream media that now smells blood in the water. While Captain Marvel herself has become kind of a sad, embarrassing mistake, ostracised from the rest of the MCU and restricted to a handful of meaningless cameos to remind people that she even still exists. As the years went by, the contractually obligated sequel was repeatedly delayed, rewritten, reshot, and dogged by rumours of problems on set, conflicts with the studio, and trailers that desperately tried every trick in the book to generate some kind of interest in this movie. But just like a giant post-kebab turd, Marvel could only hold it in for so long before it finally had to be squeezed out into the world. And so, here we find ourselves staring down the barrel of the Marvels. That is one big pile of shit. The movie kicks off with generic space wizard lady who digs up a magical bullshit bangle from a random planet somewhere, which turns out to be the counterpart to the other magical bullshit bangle used by Kamala Khan. You know her, don't you? Oh wait, you don't. That's probably because she's a character from an obscure Disney Plus show that nobody watched. Speaking of obscure characters from Disney Plus shows that nobody watched, Monica Rambeau is now working as an astronaut for Sabre and she's got the power to go floompy and pass through solid objects after getting a spell cast on her by Scarlet Witch. Fuck me, this is getting convoluted already. Anyway, the system of magical bullshit space portals that everyone apparently uses to traverse the universe are starting to act kinda weird, so the hollowed out shell that was once Nick Fury sends Captain Marvel to investigate. And wouldn't you know it, Monica Monica Rambeau decides to investigate one herself at exactly the same moment. Oh my goodness, what are the odds, eh? Then there's a big energy surge and everyone swaps places with everyone else. Although it did have me wondering why their clothes go with them, but Monica Rambeau's spacesuit doesn't. Probably because the prospect of a teenage girl explosively decompressing on our screens would have turned it into a very different movie, but whatever. The point here is that all three of our diverse heroes are now quantum entangled, so if two of them happen to use their power at the same time, they'll magically swap places. Well, when it's convenient to the plot at least. Why does this happen? Don't know. Just consume product and then get excited for next product. Anyway, much hilarity ensues before the three of them figure out that all of this is being orchestrated by generic space wizard lady, who's actually a Kree fighting to save her homeworld from extinction after Captain Marvel triggered a destructive civil war by destroying the AI that was keeping everything running. And that also caused their son to die out somehow because civil wars are well known for that sort of thing. Uh, fuck me, who wrote this nonsense? Oh yeah, and the more she messes with the magical bullshit bangles, the more damage it does to the magical jump point network, ultimately threatening to tear apart the fabric of reality itself. Oh my goodness, another Marvel movie about a giant scary space portal that has to be closed before it destroys the entire universe. Truly, their imagination knows no bounds. So the three diverse women have to learn to work together to stop generic space wizard lady from destroying the multiverse or something, while Nick Fury contends with an outbreak of alien cats on his space station. And then they seal the portal, but oh no, Monica Rambeau gets stuck on the other side in a different reality, where Beast from X-Men shows up for some reason, and her mum that most people forgot even existed is apparently still alive. No way! And that's it, that's the plot for the Marvels. Fuck. You know when you bump into some asshole who made life miserable in high school that you haven't seen in like 10 years, and you notice they're wearing faded jeans and a sweat stained t-shirt, they've gained 50 pounds and smell vaguely of cheap booze and stale urine, you might have imagined you'd feel some kind of satisfaction in the knowledge they've failed so spectacularly, but instead all you experience is a lingering sense of sadness and pity. Well, that's kind of how I felt watching the Marvels. It's 105 minutes of absolute, directionless, passionless, unfunny cringe, all 
awkwardly chopped and spliced together from what I assume was once a much longer cut, and shuffling embarrassingly onto the screen like even it knew how shit it was and just wanted to get the whole painful experience over with as quickly as possible. And in a lot of ways, it really wasn't the film I imagined. I expected some defiant last stand against the armies of haters just waiting for it to fail, a production bloated by ego and consumed by bitterness, well aware of its impossible position and determined to go out guns blazing. Instead, what we got was a weirdly small, unambitious, almost apologetic kind of film, half-heartedly going through all the old Marvel tropes but knowing how trite and predictable they've become. A film made by a studio that's lost its confidence, lost its magic, lost its way. I mean, on the plus side, the obnoxious preoccupation with tearing down some imagined patriarchy and proving how Captain Marvel could do everything better than the boys that blighted the first movie is more or less absent here. I never got the sense that the film was trying to push any particular agenda or preach to me about social or political issues, so that makes a nice change for Marvel. You've got to do better, Senator. You've got to step up. Kamala Khan is mostly pretty likeable throughout the film, and I think a lot of that comes down to a man Villani's performance. You can tell she's having a lot of fun and she's excited just to be there. Shit man, even Brie Larson gets to show a bit of personality for once. She's not going to be winning any Oscars for this one, and there's times when those behind the scenes tensions seem pretty obvious in her performance, but generally she comes across as far more human and likeable than she did in her first movie. The direction from Nia da Costa is generally competent enough, apart from some truly reprehensible CGI that probably wasn't her fault, and one or two of the early fight scenes with constantly switching characters actually border on fun and imaginative. But the problem is they're overshadowed by the movie's massive writing and editing flaws. The character swapping thing was clearly a response to Captain Marvel being overpowered as fuck and needing some way of limiting her abilities, which really smacks of a problem that they created for themselves. You guys chose to make her into Superman without the kryptonite, and now you're having to concoct bullshit reasons why she can't just fix every problem instantly. Nick Fury might as well not even be in this film because it feels like his subplot is completely disconnected from everything else. If you haven't watched Secret Invasion then you're probably gonna have no fucking clue what's even happening here. I mean really, he basically stopped being Nick Fury the moment he got his eye scratched out by a fucking cat. And the goofy imposter playing him seems to care less and less about keeping up the facades. Generic Space Wizard Lady is exactly that. Completely forgettable, barely getting a shred of development, and she's pursuing her goal in the most ridiculous way imaginable. Like, she basically wants revenge against Captain Marvel for destroying her people, and she does it by hurting the people that she cares about, but there's nothing to prevent Captain Marvel for doing the exact same thing again. The quantum entanglement thing wasn't something she was even aware of until later in the movie, which means there would have been absolutely nothing to stop her. You can really tell that this film was butchered in the editing room too. Characters magically teleport from one location to the next with nothing to link them together, and I'm not even talking about the stupid bangle thing either. They just show up wherever they need to be. Potentially interesting character arcs and relationships are barely hinted at, and then resolved with no real explanation. Like, one of the big sources of tension between Captain Marvel and Monica Rambeau is that she never visited her after her mother died because she triggered a Kree civil war and was apparently trying to fix it, but there's nothing to suggest that she actually tried to help them in any way. I mean, with all her godlike powers and abilities, she basically could have fixed most of their problems overnight. Or for example, imagine if Kamala Khan realised the woman she'd looked up to as a hero was actually a bit of a monster responsible for millions of deaths. What might that do to their relationship and her perception of her? Would it trigger a crisis of confidence, maybe teach her to rely more on herself than putting others on unrealistic pedestals? Fuck knows, because the plot barely even addresses stuff like this. I mean, why bother with that kind of thing when you can have an excruciating song and dance sequence that goes on forever and serves absolutely no purpose to the story? Or an entire subplot about space cats eating people? All of it is nothing but a ridiculous conglomeration of absolute nonsense thrown together by a studio that's completely lost confidence in its own work, and in some ways, it really feels like the end of an era. It's almost certainly the end for Brie Larson as Captain Marvel, who's made no secret of her dissatisfaction with the character and seems pretty reluctant to play her again. And to be honest, I don't blame her one bit. She's in her mid-thirties now and those prime opportunities are going to start drying up before too long, and really, I can't imagine she needs or wants the hassle of playing a character like this anymore. But more than that, it feels like the tired and played out end of the entire Marvel formula. The bloated budgets, the heavy CGI, 
the quippy self-referential humour, the sky portals and the armies of disposable bad guys. It's all become so tedious and boring and predictable that people aren't even angry anymore, they just don't care. The original Captain Marvel was a divisive movie that inspired debate and controversy, but this one falls victim to a far more insidious problem. Absolute apathy. This really is how the MCU dies. Not with a bang, but with a whimper. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.